the tree is no longer here, but the site where it happens still is. Hello! Welcome to Adventures in TV Land. For today's adventure, I've come to St. John's Cemetery in Collinsville, Illinois. I've come here because here in this locale was the site of a very horrific event in April 5th, 1918. Here occurred the lynching, the tragic death of Robert Prager. Robert Prager immigrated to the United States in the early 1900s as, as a teenager. He worked for a short time as a baker and then he did spend some time in jail. He later, he traveled around basically in the Midwest area. For a short time he lived in St. Louis and eventually he found himself living in Collinsville, Illinois. He came here to Collinsville because of the mines and he had heard about the, the very high wages that miners were being paid and he wished to be a miner himself. Prager was a very patriotic individual. He loved his adopted country of the United States of America. He had, when he lived in St. Louis, he had a huge American flag in the window of his apartment and his landlord ordered him to take it down. Prager turned his landlord into the police. Now Prager, as an immigrant, he attempted to join the U.S. Navy, but he was rejected because of health reasons. So he loved his country. He loved the country. He loved the United States. But Prager was a German immigrant. And in the late 19-teens, an anti-German hysteria was gripping all throughout the country. Prager worked as a baker, but he found out about the high wages that miners were making. And so he applied to be a member of the mining union to be a miner here in Collinsville, Illinois. Unfortunately for Prager, due to the several circumstances, I mean, one being the anti-German hysteria, another being uh, some of the race riots and the, because there were strikes that had happened year, a few years before and scabs had been brought in of different nationalities and they didn't, the sentiment here in Collinsville was not very positive to immigrants. And so Prager's application for membership into the union to work in the mines was rejected. This rejection did not sit well with Prager. Now he wrote a letter to the president of the mine union, basically stating that, you know, he was pro-American and that he had, you know, he was for the unions, he was pro-unionization, he was a, wanted to be a union member, but there was nothing he could do about his German heritage. He was born in Germany. Now, things might have been okay for Prager. Well, they should have been okay anyway, but Prager didn't just send the letter to the president of the mining union. He left copies of his letter around the saloons, the bars, the places where the miners hung out. He actually posted it around the mine itself. And <laughs> when the miners got off work and they read this letter, they became furious and enraged. So a group of miners left from the mines and the bars and they, they marched the Prager's house and they told him, if you're if you really love the United States, if you're a real American, you'll kiss the flag. And they, he did, he kissed the American flag. And then they told him if he was really an American, if he really loved this country, he would wear the flag. And they draped the American flag around his shoulders. And they forced him to remove his shoes. And then they marched him 
barefoot through town, beating him and calling, calling him names and insulting him and singing patriotic songs all along the way. Now, a few police officers did were eventually, once they, you know, they were downtown in Collinsville, they removed Prager and they put him in jail, not because he had done anything wrong, but to protect him for his safety. Now, the mob gathered in front of the police station, demanding that they release Prager. And eventually the mayor came out, he tried to calm him down and everything like that. Now, unbeknownst to the mayor, um, the police, trying to protect Prager, they, they released him from jail and they hid him below in the sewer area. Because they thought, you know, if the mob broke in, they weren't going to search that area or anything like that. The mayor, he kind of calmed the mob, the mob down, I guess, and told them they could come search the jail because Prager wasn't there. They came in, of course he wasn't there in the jail, but a couple of the mob members did find Prager down in the sewer area, and they drug him up and they took him outside. Once again, they now they took him not through the main streets, but through the side streets and out to the outskirts of the city. And some people, they had the idea, hey, let's get some tar and feather him and let's, let's kick Prager out of town. Tar and feather him out of town. Ah, and they all, they all thought that was a good idea. So they went to go get some tar, but they couldn't find any. But what they did find was a piece of rope. And so then some of the people in the mob said, forget tar and feather him. Let's hang him instead. Now, some people, there was murmurs of dissent, but there was no one who stepped forward and said no. There was no one who said this, stepped forward and said, no, this is a horrible idea. There was no one in the mob that was there that even left and turned away. And so the mob there, about 150, 200 people, on the top of the bluff near the cemetery overlooking St. Louis, they hung Robert Prager. Now the mob, they did allow Prager to write a final letter, to write some final words before they took his life. And he so in a piece of paper, the last wrote, the last words that he wrote were, Dear parents, I must on this the fourth day of April 1918 die. Please pray for me, my dear parents. And then the mob hung Robert Prager and killed him from a tree. To add insult to the death of Robert Prager, 11 men were charged in his murder and death. They were brought to trial and all 11 men were found not guilty. They were found not guilty of murder, not guilty of his death, not guilty of any wrongdoing. The marker reads Robert Prager lynching site. On April 5th, 1918, German immigrant Robert Prager was hanged by a mob at this site. Prager's lynching was the high water mark of the anti-immigrant and anti-German hysteria that gripped the nation during World War I. Persecution persecution in the guise of patriotism was especially severe in the southern Illinois coal fields. Eleven men accused of the murder were promptly acquitted. For generations there was remorse. For generations there was remorse in Collinsville over the town's failure to stop the mob and the lynching. One witness later said, Nowhere appeared a sober, clear headed man to say no and make it stick, and so came violence, death, tragedy and shame. Now Prager's last and final request before he died was that his body be buried in an American flag. His request was honored. His body was taken across the river and buried near the place where he lived in St. Louis by the Swiss consulate. That's right, Swiss, not German, but the Swiss consulate. And they had his body buried. And so now we're going to go visit the final resting place of Robert Prager.
Gregor's grave is fairly easy to find. It is in section 8 of the cemetery, which is located right behind Caretaker's Cottage. And there he lies, Robert Prager. So was born February 28, 1888 at Dresden, Saxony, died April 5, 1918 at Collinsville, Illinois, the victim of a mob. The International Order of Odd Fellows restored this marker in his sight. And thus is the shortened version of the tragic death of Robert Prager. This has been another adventure in TV land. If you've liked this video, hit the like button. If you disliked, hit the dislike button. Subscribe to my channel for further content and ring that bell for email notifications. And if there's some place that you would like to see me visit, or you have a suggestion about some future video you would like to see me do, leave a comment in the comment section. And you can help support Adventures in TV Land by going to either buy me a coffee or Patreon, making a donation or becoming a member at either one of those two places, or by just hitting the super like button below. Thank you for watching. Until next time, that's a wrap.